Prior to the stay-at-home orders with respect to the COVID-19 crisis, the Women's Guild of St. Leon Armenian Church of New Jersey held a lecture by Dr. Ani Kalajian. Dr. Kalajian began her multi-topic lecture by offering expert advice on how to manage stress and anxiety during this time of crisis. She also shared the World Health Organization's Center for Disease Control Guidelines for reducing the transmission of COVID-19. Continuing with uh, her presentation, on, Dr. Klagian spoke about on. eight top meaningful worlds, 30 plus years of volunteer outreach to countries around the world, commencing in 1988 to the present. She remembered ATOP's first outreach program to Armenia in 1988. During this mission, the organization provided earthquake relief. Since then, ATOP has been to many countries providing humanitarian services. Dr. Kalajian also discussed the importance of vitamins and essential oils for emotional and physical well-being, particularly the benefits of magnesium complex, which helps constipation, hypertension, anxiety, depression, and brain fog. She also demonstrated the healing benefits of essential oils. Sage is good for you to have in the house, especially now. It kills 94% of all bacteria in your house and around you that you carry from public areas. I also gave you some rosemary. Rosemary is excellent to protect you from bacteria, colds, and it's especially good for the lungs. If you are coughing a lot, you have like incessant chronic cough, this is excellent rosemary. You put it, uh, mix it with some oil or Nivea and put it in your chest. It's excellent. It really opens up your bronchioles. I also like to mention for everyone to take extra caution and take L-lysine. L-lysine is a natural like antibiotics, natural antibiotics that really protects you from all bacteria. Whenever you feel like you're getting some symptoms like sneezing or like you're having body aches, you take L-lysine twice a day and it really prevents it from growing to be a cold or a virus. Very important. Also vitamin C. So this is just up to date today from WHO about the virus and how to reduce the transmission. Washing hands is paramount. Really wash every chance you get. Second, clean surfaces at home and at work area. When you come into work, clean your desk, your phone, your chair, etc. Do not touch your face, mouth, eyes, nose with unwashed hands. If you have some Symptoms, stay at home and seek medical advice. Maintain distance between yourself and others. So that's basically it. Uh, if you're caring for someone that has been diagnosed, you need to be extra careful and that's the time you wear a mask. Don't wear masks all the time. You make yourself more sick. Uh, only when you're caring for someone or you are in an airplane or public area and you're unsure of your immune system. Avoid eating raw or undercooked animal products and handle the animal products separately from all vegetables and grains is very important. During her presentation, Dr. Kalajian spoke about the concept of emotional intelligence and provided examples such as a robust emotional vocabulary, curiosity about people, embracing change, and knowing one's strengths and weaknesses. You look into this every morning and you ask yourself, what am I feeling this morning? Oh, maybe I am feeling a little frustrated with the uh, dozens of emails I'm getting about this coronavirus thing and the fear that people are trying to like really, really instill in others. So after you identify your emotion, then you will measure it. Why? Because we do not have a emotional thermometer. We cannot just, ah, let's see how much is my anxiety or my frustration or my disappointment or my anxiety or my stress. We don't have it. 
So we're going to ask ourselves from 1 to 10, what level is my anxiety or my frustration today, the morning that you wake up, every morning? And then if it's above 4, you have to stop and do something about it for discharge. So part of that, yeah. yell, <laughs> that's great, yes, you can yell, scream and cry and and uh, you can then talk with somebody if there is someone in the house who is empathic and non-judgmental. That may be hard to find. Uh, especially in our families, we judge. Oh, don't cry. Or, you know, imagine if somebody is vomiting from poisonous stuff. Does anyone say don't vomit? But we always say don't cry. So next time you automatically want to say don't cry, change that thought and say what can I do to help you? Here's a tissue and cry more. Here's my shoulder, cry more. Because you want that person to release. You don't want them to hide it. And then it becomes a disease. Emotions that are not resolved, negative emotions, will become full-fledged diseases. So emotional intelligence, let's recap. You have a robust emotional vocabulary. You're curious about people. You embrace change. You don't complain about change. You know your strengths and weaknesses. And you are a good judge of character. You are difficult to offend. You know how to say no. That is something we need to learn to ourselves and to someone else. You let go of your mistakes and learn from them. You give not because you are expected to give, you give because it makes you feel good, because you want to give. You don't hold grudges because that's just gonna hurt you, nobody else. You let go of toxic people and if need be, you neutralize and, uh, their negativity. And you work on your health. You sleep better and you disconnect from this crazy net of iPhones and emails and iPads and all that because we need to disconnect from electronics to feel better. Dr. Kalajian also discussed trauma specifically the fact that trauma that is not transformed will be transferred to others. In our work, we work with five different kinds of traumas. First is horizontal trauma, generational trauma, individual trauma, vicarious, and collective. Now, what is horizontal trauma? You can see this. Don't be a crab in the bucket pulling one another down. Be a true humanitarian, Armenian, and lift one another up. So this is especially, we make a campaign in every country and every place that we go. Have you seen crabs in the bucket? One tries to come up, and second one pulls it down. Third one wants to come up, fourth one pulls it down. Nobody gets out. This is what it is when people start being jealous of each other or different groups, that church, this church, that uh, Tashnag, Hunchak, Ramgavar, even Tekeyan divides into two, three parties. Uh, Ramgavars divide into two, three parties. This is the outcome of horizontal violence. Uh, individual trauma, it's every, whatever you individually experience. Vicarious trauma is when you hear other people as a therapist, as a medical doctor, as a psychologist, as a priest. You hear people's traumas and problems and vicariously you get impacted. Or collective, remember 9-11, even if you didn't have a loved one there, we all were suffering. That's a collective trauma. So let's move on. So we have worked in uh, uh, 48 countries in Middle East, Caribbean, Africa, Europe, Asia, North America, and South America. 
Dr. Kalajian continued her lecture with her signature seven-step integrative healing model. Some of the points included assessing one's level of distress, expressing and releasing negative emotions, and seeking empathy validation. So the first one, step one, is about your assessment, assessing your feeling. First measuring, and then expressing. Under the expression, which is a release, which is number two, we have the morning pages, which is in the morning after you identify your feeling and you measure it. You then take a blank page and just write, discharge, whatever you're feeling. Just let it go. Journaling you can do as well. Talking about how was your day, what you learned from your day, how you felt about things. Talking with empathic family and friends. Seeking professional assistance. So that's getting mental health checkups, working on preventive methods. Step three is empathy and validation. Distracting people and saying, forget about that. Let's go uh, uh, have something to eat or, or just, you don't need to worry about that. God is taking care of everything. These are generalized statements is not going to help the individual. The goal is to let them discharge and you support them. Just hold their hands or just hold the therapeutic environment and just encourage them and let them discharge. We're going to step four. So from one, step one to step four, we still are a victim, we still are um, having emotions uh, that are sad or, or frustrating or disappointing or hurtful. But when we come to step four, it's like we come out of the ashes, we come out of the ashes and like a phoenix we rise through the ashes by learning something new, a new lesson, and then integrating that into our life, whatever that lesson is. So we cannot change others, we can only change ourselves, and that we have difficulties as well. Mistakes are not judgments, they are opportunities to learn and grow. And meaning making is the freedom we feel after a traumatic event because after you lose everything, it's what the sense you got out of that that the enemy cannot change. So don't let that you know, interfere uh, with your positive meaning making. Uh, life events, no matter how challenging, are only 10%. 90% is our attitude, what we, how we respond to what's happening. That is our choice. Nobody can take that away from us. Step five is gathering information because information is power and now we have to be vigilant because we get so many information. We need to select which one is consistent with our philosophy, with our way of living. So step six is about connecting with Mother Nature and using the different gifts that God has created in the Mother Earth, such as trees. You know that almond trees or oak trees are wonderful to sit under when, of course, they are back in bloom because it relieves stress and it also decreases your blood pressure. Um, instead of cutting flowers or, uh, or giving cut flowers as gifts, think about giving plants with the soil so the person can continue cultivating it. Be mindful of your carbon footprint. Establish peace and forgiveness garden. Be in nature as much as you can and watch the sunrise or sunset. Dr. Kalajan showed several breathing and stretching exercises to help the body recover physically and mentally. I love, respect, and accept myself fully and unconditionally. Dr. Kalajian concluded her lecture with a slide image of a valley of flowers, 
which is the work of one woman who planted a seed every year for many years. Dr. Kalajian gave spiritual advice to the audience to make a difference in their life, in someone else's life, and to Mother Earth. The event concluded with Dr. Kalajian signing copies of the three books she has written, Forget Me Not, Forgiveness and Reconciliation, and Mass Trauma and Emotional Healing Around the World. Many audience members were interested in her writings and purchased her books. During this difficult time, Dr. Kalajian's message of mindfulness, charity, spirituality, and mental and physical health resonates with many. We're all conversing here what an excellent program this was, and Dr. Annie was so informed, and every minute we were absorbed, and we thank her for coming and doing the presentation for us. I enjoyed her presentation very much. She was very informative. Uh, I think that people learned a lot here tonight, and uh, I greatly appreciate her coming here and giving a fantastic lecture on emotional intelligence. I'd just like to say how Dr. Anni was very helpful and very informative in giving her a lecture about how to manage stress. It's very helpful. We all need it in this busy world. Dr. Ani's presentation was very helpful. Anyone that has suffering with stress or anxiety, doesn't know how to deal with anger that maybe they're holding on to for years, or any situation that comes up, whether it's with the spouses or children or job, uh, her breathing exercises and, and so on, just hearing her in a very positive mode made us all feel so much more uplifted and uh, I'm you know, eager to hear her again. Thank you for coming, this was wonderful.